from the HI2 stereo, Sechi Bagoosh. I'll just let it kind of loop there a second. We saw this happen about a year ago, you guys, and I could not for the life of you, me tell you what the heck is going on here. But apparently, we'll figure out what that planet here is in just a second, but look at the explosion on this camera. What the... And I won't finish that word. All right, let's take another set. Look at another set you here real quick. Another weird one from HI1. Again, this one is weird because you're going to see a don't like kind of a sphere appear behind the Earth there. And we'll analyze that a little bit more closely in a second. I just wanted to give you the first look at it. Everybody says, "Oh, these fake, these are these these instruments from NASA are fake." Blah blah blah. You know what? Shut up. I'm sick of hearing it. These are space instruments. They are showing us stuff. They cover stuff up. It's 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 always going to be, you know, if you have sufficient proof of planets in this solar system, they're going to find some damn thing wrong with it because they don't want us to know the truth. And I'm getting just about sick of people saying that you can't trust these things. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain level of discretion you got to use with it, but man, why would they ever show us this stuff? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? kind of the footage from the uh, um, HI1A set where it actually shows the planet. So that's Saturn out there too, you know, out in the distance. And then we've got Earth here in the foreground, so we know what that is. And as we can see now on the HI2A with the planet labeled, that's Jupiter that ran into the baffle there. And again, this is exactly what we saw last year, and that's why it's freaking me out a little bit. Eh, why is Jupiter in the same position as it was last year? It takes more than a year for it to get around the sun. B, kaboom, here it goes. You can't quite see it as clearly as what we saw it on the, um, the other um, representation of it because of the different um, detection, but there it is, guys. And I remember the one time I challenged them on that baffle, they took it down for a couple days. <laughs> and there's a big, like, thing behind it. Oh my God! Oh, Here's some photographs yeah, yeah. Um, from 5:26. I think this is Australia. Yeah, it's Australia, and we're getting this this big. You're going to show it, see the same thing over here in Alaska here in just a second. But what I'm more interested in is all that's going on over here. Watch what happens in this like little teeny time lapse. You got all this movement going on, and oh, it's fake. Mm -mm, that's not fake. That's real. We're not photoshopping or doing anything, man. You can go look to any of these like airport cams and see them for yourself. No problemo. Here's that. Here's what we we started to see down there. Um, and this is what I wanted to point out and look at real quick. And uh, basically, you've got this kind of orb with the center in it again. And it got now it's starting to have this translucently like shiny looking thing to it. And it's not a lens flare, guys. It's not how they work. The there's. Here's another, <laughs> I'm in a, a squirrely mood today. Here's another one where we're seeing it in uh, in Alaska. But this one is really, really weird because look at how it's got the tail on it, man. Doesn't that remind you of what the, what the ancients said about it? Uh, this kind of thing with the tail on it. Again, an untouched photo from Alaska, guys. You know, people are just pulling off to the side of the road and taking pictures of the stuff now, guys. It's not, this isn't like... A debate anymore it's you know that's why i don't even want to talk to the trolls anymore i want to talk to any of the people on the opposition saying it doesn't exist i'm I, I it's just to me it's ridiculous and it's destructive and it doesn't do anybody any good i'd rather discuss and debate this with other nibiru researchers to refine our understanding of what it is because we don't all have the same point of view as you guys know in the audience so why don't we all put our freaking hats in the ring and start debating each other and reaching each other's audience with better information. Why would we ever give the trolls any voice? And that's the policy now of WSO. I've taken the advice of everybody I've listened to over the last week. We will not entertain or or promote or publish or discuss trolls anymore. That is it. We're we're about research right now. Here's a nice one from Sharon. She's just she was noticing some uh, you know kind of the double orbing going on around the sun. And let's open this one up a little bit further, man, because you guys got to see this stuff. Look at this. Here's another airportview.net view. And we're just getting these huge orbs up in the sky, guys. And again, it's not, there's not really a debate um, anymore. It's more, you know, it's more what are we looking at, not a debate about what it, 
you know, if it's here or not, you know. Here's one from Alaska where we can actually see those two orbs that we saw on the um, drone flight the other day. Again, we see this all the time. They're getting bigger. Um, I will add to that, and they're moving with the sun. They're not a sun flare. See that? De, 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 de. And again, you know, it's just I'm getting so, so, so tired right now of trying to explain this to folks that are just never going to listen. So I'm not going to waste time anymore. You know, there are people that want to listen to this and want this information, and, and I'm here for you. Everybody else, take a leap. You know, if you don't like it, unsubscribe from my channel. Seriously, I don't want you here if you're not here to learn more and try to add to the discussion. I'd rather you leave, okay? But those of you who want to learn more about what's going on and try to help us figure out what's going on, stay here with me as long as you want to, man. Send me as many notes and letters as you want to. And we're all in it together. That's why I look at it. Here's the one I wanted to look at, though. Ah, what? 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 You know, this is where BP Earthwatch would say, that's a lens flare. <laughs> I love you, BP. BP thinks everything's a lens flare. And, you know, we get a lot of people just critiquing us all the time about this kind of stuff. But how could you call that a lens flare, man? What kind of crazy person do you think I am? Dude, we can see, like, texture and stuff. This reminds me of what Gary was seeing in Wainwright the other day. Hey, Gary. Yeah, Gary was the first one to, ca to catch this one, man. And here it is, as plain as day. I mean, how, what, what can you say to this, guys? Really? You're going to try to tell me that all of the stuff that we're showing is just co totally false, and it just gets more and more every day. You know what I mean? Um, just, just weird. Now, this one is from Neil, and he's, Neil's been with us from the beginning, but he actually caught lightning up in the sky with no clouds. I darkened this up a little bit, and you always got these high-level clouds don't the chem trailing, but you could actually see, watch, the lightning producing up there. No thunder clouds, no nothing. We're looking for plasma activity, so whenever we see this kind of thing, we want to point it out to you guys just to say, heads up, man, there's some plasma activity going on, okay? So let's see what else we've got here today to share. Um, and then the last one, I don't know if this is even interesting or not, but let's just put it up anyway. So in this picture, we have, oh, yeah, 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 this is interesting. Watch the UFO go through. <laughs> let's do it again. So we've been talking to all these artists this week, right? Gerald Clark. We've been talking to Bob Evans. We've been talking to Matthew Rogers. We've been talking to, um, we're going to be talking to Gil Brizard next Thursday. And it's almost like we've got the titans of freaking Nibiru coming and talking about all this stuff. Bob Evans. All these guys are freaking experts. Now, I want to share something with you that I think you'll think is very funny. Um, we talk about targeting all the time, and I laugh about it. I'm not going to sit there and get bent about it and sound like some kind of paranoid guy. We just get targeted. They mess with us all the time. They know that we're a threat to them. They demonetized our deep state video, which is no surprise to me. They'll let me run the Nibiru the videos because they're so popular right now, and everybody wants and hungers for that information. But as soon as we start talking deep state, demonetize right away, you know. And then this morning after we, and this this is what Bad Baby told me that everybody that anybody that interviews Bob Evans like we did yesterday, that's so funny. I'm laughing because they're so ridiculous. They're not going to stop the truth, man. Truth itself will set people free. That's what the Bible says, and that's what I believe. The truth will set you free, so seek the truth so it can set you free. But here's the truth, right? The truth is, we talked to Bob Evans. He he lays some heavy revvies on us, some really interesting stuff, right? And then next day, I'm uh, because we're all working in the same house for WSO now. All The whole team is here in one place. So if they want to kill us all at one time, they probably can do it. We wake up in the morning and none of our phones are working. Hey, my phone won't work. I can't get on my phone. <laughs> and you know what? You know what they you know what they do? We had to go all the way to like a level four engineering tech at Verizon. They had to reset the main switch. So somebody buggered up the settings in there, messed us up good for the morning. We couldn't even make a call until like two o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah, we get targeted, guys. And you know, the only reason somebody like you know, the only reason you're gonna get targeted is if you're over the target, right? They're not gonna shoot the anti-aircraft gums unless you're like right over them. So any truther, I don't care, news like Dabu or any of those guys, um, any of the Nibiru researchers, listen, my my I absolutely do not want to fight anybody that is in this space. And if I have sounded that way, it is absolutely not gonna happen anymore. We have to pull together right now. 
this is a critical time for humanity. Decisions must be made. And we have to make these decisions and we have to group up. No one person has the truth. We need each other. And that's why we went through and did all, we're doing all these different Nibiru artists and creators and people that are doing work in this area. We wanted to get as many points of view as we could. And so there's going to be a lot of different theology involved in that, guys. I understand. And I get it. But here's the thing. Not everybody has the same a belief structure. God dang, look at that. Look at this. I didn't even see this one. Oh, my. Interesting. Interesting. But what I was getting to is none of us have the whole truth. And I here's my strategy. Here's WSO's strategy now. Our strategy is that we're going to try to reach out to anybody who wants to give information that has credible data. If they don't want to respond to us, that's fine too. We love you, man. Go do your own thing, free choice and all that. But listen, we're better, stronger together than we are different and separate. And the, our, our, our enemies is, is not the trolls. The trolls are just an inconvenience. Think about who our real enemies are. The ones that want our souls. The ones that want to keep us on this prison planet. Jesus, you know, the ones that, you know, that all, you know, like Jesus came to save it, set us free from and save us from. That's the kinds of, that's the, the real battle. It's the principalities and it's the powers and the rulers in dark places. It's not people, man. It's not Scott. It's not any of those guys. They're not my enemy. They're not your enemy. So let's all pull together, man. I love you all, man. I really do. And we'll finish up with this Ponca City, Oklahoma from yesterday. But in this, in this time right now, guys, it is critical, critical, critical that we stick together that we pull together, that we share information, and that we love on each other. And do me one big favor today, guys, if you don't mind. Could you just do one kind thing? Just one. Doesn't have to be a big deal. Just give up, give up, you know, give somebody a buck on the street or, you know, say a nice word to somebody or go over to your neighbor and rake their lawn or, you know, do something, man, because we have to start taking positive actions because we'll get so catatonic from this stuff and we, what we need to do realize is that our job is to help people. And it's not so it's not so important to convince people if it's true or not. You know, we're going to find out soon enough that if it's true or not, right? And, you know, that's kind of a that's kind of a reality we have no control over. But here's what I'm going to say about it, okay? We do have the control over how we respond to people and what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. So I'm encouraging you with the spirit of God, go touch somebody with kindness today. Be nice. And with that said, I love you all. I'm going to stick with it. We're not quitting. Nobody's going to tell me to stop. And I don't think anybody should tell you to stop either. God bless. Bye. What is that on screen? No astronomer has seen this before. Scientists say they're clueless about what it might be. A meteor, a star, clearly a UFO, as in unidentified. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physics professor and host of the new Science Channel series, Sci-Fi Science, Physics of the Impossible. Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, renewed for a second season. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, back on the screen, what is it? We don't know. We are stumped. Uh, scientists around the world are saying, what the heck is this object? It doesn't fit any of the profiles of the usual suspects. That's the problem. Usual suspects are comets, meteor, stars, star. galaxies, planets. How about uh, some sort of alien dealio? You might be. Into that? Well, you know, the object is about the size of the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl Stadium. So it's too small to be a planet or a star or a galaxy. And it's not a comet. There's no gas in the tail of that comet. It's not a meteor, because it's not inside the Earth's atmosphere. Uh -huh. So what is it? We're scratching our head. The only thing we can think of at the present time is a once-in-a-lifetime event, the collision of two asteroids in space. We've never seen that before, creating a starburst, a starburst of debris. And if that theory is correct, it means with the weeks, the starfish should get bigger and bigger and eventually fade away. So the asteroid collision, it, it may have happened before. We just have not seen evidence of it. This is the first time it's been caught on camera, if it is an asteroid collision. And what would that mean to folks like you? You would study that to figure out what, Michio? Well, we realize that asteroids are predictable. We know exactly where they are going around the sun. But if they collide, it's a game changer. We think that may have wiped out the dinosaurs. There was a cosmic collision about a hundred million years ago, debris was sent all over the asteroid belt, and one piece, get this, one piece hit the Earth from that collision about 65 million years ago, and that's when the dinosaurs died. 
in perhaps just one year. So we think that an asteroid collision, a big one, probably wiped out the dinosaurs. Wow, so that would be significant for people like you because what happened was I guess some folks saw this deep in space and they said, you need to check that out. So we took the Hubble telescope and mm -hmm. we pointed it in this direction and now we have these brilliant pictures. That's right. A month ago we spot this little speck doing all sorts of shenanigans that it shouldn't be doing. The Hubble Space Telescope zooms in on it and we, our jaws hit the floor. At it's, that it's point we were saying... Thing. Uh, now, it's called the P-2010A2, and you say that's short for... We are clueless. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. So we have to learn a lot more about these asteroid collisions. Uh, that's tells right. us a lot about our future, right? That's right, and they're random. We don't know where they come from, and if the debris hits the Earth, they're unpredictable, and we think the dinosaurs got wiped out precisely in this way. Only if they had the Hubble. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Uh, Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, check him out on the Science Channel. I'll meet you. Thank you very much. Right. Good no information today raising new questions about possible contacts with UFOs. A top secret document filed by the FBI in 1949 tells how three different men each reported seeing a UFO breaking up in midair. The document reveals that they were miles apart at the time, and each one of them say they saw the UFO explode over the mountains in Utah. Here now, Dr. Lynn Kitai, the executive producer of the Phoenix Lights Network, to tell us more. Uh, doctor, what do you make of this? Actually, it's, it's interesting that, that this would go viral. Supposedly, it's been on the Internet since 19, or available to the public since 1977. And um, uh, I spoke with Dr. Bruce McAbee, who is a former Navy optical uh, physicist and a renowned UFO investigator who actually has done much research uh, on the FBI files. He has a book, UFO's Connection, and to quote him, that we have been visited by um, advanced technology uh, that's gracing our skies well, worldwide, not only, not only for decades, uh, as this would say, but also for, for centuries. Uh, to Hoover, there was a project, Grudge and Sign and, and Snowbird, and uh, the only public study at the time was Project Blue Book, uh, which was closed in 1969 with the statement that uh, UFOs are not a threat to national security. Well, how did they know that unless they were studying it? Um, and as we see in the, in the uh, mass sighting that happened in Arizona in 1997 called the Phoenix Lights, there were thousands of people statewide for many hours that, that actually saw a mile to two mile wide craft traverse the entire state. Uh, and that still has uh, not been explained. Well, Doctor, it's certainly an interesting topic. Folks will want to dig into these documents. They can find them online. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Lynn Kitai. From cyberspace to outer space, the number of UFO sightings in Canada is soaring tenfold over the past 25 years. The majority of those flying objects eventually get identified, but a few are never explained. And that's enough to keep some sky watchers wondering if just one sighting could be real. Here's Ross Lord. Blame it on Hollywood. But an increasing number of Canadians insist the drama surrounding unidentified flying objects is real. There is a very bright light, and I kept watching, and they just threw it right up, right across, just floating like it was floating. Sort of like these images from Halifax. What the hell is that? This is the second time I've seen it. Fort Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, London, Sudbury. This Winnipeg science writer has never seen one, but Chris Rutkowski works with a network of observers on an annual UFO survey. It doesn't automatically say the aliens are invading and, and landing in uh, Mississauga. What it does say is that people are seeing some very unusual objects, uh, many of which we can't uh, ascribe to a simple explanation. And UFO sightings in Canada are soaring to new heights. When they started keeping track 25 years ago, there were barely more than 100 a year. Since then, a steady increase, spiking to almost 2,000 two years ago. Last year was the second highest number on record. Only about 14 or 15 percent of the cases in 2013 are unexplained. Just enough mystery to keep UFO believers wondering. Occasionally I've noticed things that were moving across the sky that were not planes or satellites, just a different color, um, a different shape. And even the experts admit there likely are advanced civilizations out there somewhere. 
maybe there's ways around the laws of physics or ways of traveling that we haven't even conceived of yet. And why they would want to come to Earth, I don't know. May, might be the scenery or the weather. Hmm, maybe the Canadian winter isn't so bad if you're watching from a safe distance. Ross Lohr, Global News, Halifax. Well, it was not a bird. It wasn't a plane. And sadly, it was not Superman. But something in the skies over the Houston area this morning did cause a lot of people to look up and wonder. I would just see reporter Deborah Wrigley joining us live with some answers, or maybe not. Deborah? Or maybe not, Tom. If this was a meteorite, it is highly unusual for one to be seen during the daylight. But there's nothing usual about what happened today. From a NASA camera, it looked like a bright light above the Earth. That's the view from space. These are from eyewitness viewers around the Houston area, just as day was breaking before 7 this morning. A bright flash of light that some people first thought was lightning. Or I was like, okay, I guess it's going to rain. It wasn't the weather, and it was spotted all around Texas. This map, just a sampling of sightings in the Houston area. And these are some of the pictures sent to ABC13.com showing a small area of colored light, others showing a trail behind it. And people have been talking about it all day. Like a UFO taking a picture of the sky, like a big flash. The co-workers were talking about, did you, you know, hear about the, the flash this morning? I'm like, flash, should I be concerned? At the Houston Museum of Natural Science, not concerned, but a lot of curiosity. Yeah, and it's going so fast that it actually gets through the atmosphere that makes the glow. The museum's astronomer suspects it's a meteorite, a small piece of rock burning through space, if it meets the criteria. Did it make a trail? Did it actually move? Did it change color? Did it move from east to west? A lot of scientists searching for an explanation to what's called the fireball over Texas. A lot of people who aren't scientists as well. I've heard so many different things about, you know, 2012, so it's like kind of scary because it's getting closer to that day and then... Coincidentally, there is a meteor shower predicted for next week. And if you're curious about the story, about the pictures, go to abc13.com. We have those viewer pictures also, that amazing NASA video. At the Houston Museum of Natural Science, Deborah Brickley, 13 Eyewitness News. Do you ever wonder what you're really seeing up in the night sky? I mean, could that strange shape or fast-moving object actually be a UFO? Or is it just a cellophane wrapper blowing in the wind? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, uh, well we sent News 10's Dave Marcus out to check it out. And Dave, uh, so what is out there, huh? Well, Dale and Christina, you might be not surprised to find out that UFO sightings have turned out to be everything from fast food containers blown up into the sky to objects that even professional pilots and astronauts have been left shaking their heads over in wonder. Something is going on if there's something up there. It can be something real, not just subjective. Local UFO watchers say sightings around Sacramento, especially in the foothills, have been up lately. Local author Ben Stecker has written extensively on UFOs. There's a phenomenon that we are perhaps several phenomena that we don't even begin to understand. Maybe they are Pleiadians or whatever from another planet or from Mars even. Local astronomer Liam McDade is more than a little skeptical. It's probably not an alien species that's traveled X number of light years to come here and harass us without doing anything obvious or overt, like landing on the White House lawn, uh, having a beer with Obama. Stecker agrees the many unexplained sightings may not be from outer space. Maybe they're, they're objects built right here by some group on Earth or by our own government. Whether from Earth or not, many scientists like McDade would just like to see some hard evidence. I need to see some actual alien hardware technology, metal, ashtray with Alpha Centauri Hilton on it, something that will make it clear to me that it does not come from our planet. More sightings, whatever they are, says Stecker, may just be that more people are gazing with interest into the night sky. We know we're confronted with a major mystery, but we don't really know what it is. Uh, there's many famous sightings of various things over the years that we've never known what they were, and, and we probably never will. And in science, that's fine.
Now, McDade says most of these stranger sightings turn out to be things like second stage rocket boosters or other fairly explainable phenomena. On the other hand, Steckler believes that so many sightings remain unexplained that there's plenty of room for speculation, including alien high technology that we can barely imagine. So there you are. And by the way, do you think it would be newsworthy if aliens did come down and have a beer with Obama? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they have. Maybe they have. It's just everyone's. <laughs> Mysterious lights hovering in the skies across several parts of the country. This video is from Indianapolis of a strange formation that appeared this week. Now, people in Metro Detroit say they've seen something just like it. Last night, our newsroom and our Facebook page got several reports of strange lights in the skies over Metro Detroit. And tonight, Fox News' Ron Savage is on a mission to find out what they really are. Ron. You, oh, you know how we operate here. We do stories on talkers, and this is a talker. Everybody's talking about it. What are the lights in the sky? Mysterious lights in the sky. Many Metro Detroiters have been wondering, what am I seeing? It wasn't qu quite as high as you would see. Them. I've been watching the airplanes tonight, and it wasn't quite as high as them. And uh, I mean, like I said, you, can, you could actually see the triangle shape of, of the object. David Levy was outside Thursday night, 9.30 p.m., with friends in Flat Rock, and suddenly... We were outside, and... Out, up in the sky, we saw a, a triangle-shaped light with, or a triangle-shaped object with about five lights flashing, heading north. Who saw it first, a friend or? Did you I did, I did. Yes. Yeah. What'd you say? I, I asked people, what, "What do you think that is?" And everybody was like, "I don't know, I don't know." And then uh, later on at night, I found out that people had been seeing this object all all over. In fact, our Fox 2 Facebook page has been blowing up with hundreds of posts. People seeing lights, like Lisa. She writes, I seen some in Southgate, but thought it was fireworks and weird for January. Nick writes, I assumed they were planes. They were flying in the same direction. I watched them for about 10 minutes, and I counted four or five of them. I'm over in St. Clair Shores. Mario writes, I seen it in East Point off Nine Mile. It was something crazy. And Sean writes, I was the one who called into the Fox 2 newsroom and first broke this story. They were black triangle-shaped objects making circles over West Bloomfield and Farmington Hills. There was no noise, and they had bright lights. I'm not making this up, and I know somebody else saw these things. These lights are all over YouTube. The original poster says they were shot in Miami this week. And these lights were said to be shot in Indianapolis. Is this similar to what David saw in Flat Rock? This kind of looks like a stand in one spot, but that's exactly what it looked like, except there was five of them. Five lights. Five lights. William Konkoleski of the Michigan Mutual UFO Network has also been taking calls from people who see lights at night all across Metro Detroit. It's very possible that people are seeing military aircraft that they haven't notified us about yet, um, like the spy planes or the, also the stealth aircraft um, that are, have been flying on our skies now for a few years. It's well known that they were testing these aircraft well before they notified people that they even existed. Now, on top of all that, we have unmanned drones up in the sky, and those things really look strange, especially for somebody that has no idea what they could even be. And certainly some people may be skeptical when they hear that somebody's reporting lights in the sky, but perhaps there is a logical explanation for some of these light displays. They've been reported all over, all over the country, and all around the calendar, all, all year round. It doesn't seem to be a particular time of the year when they're reported more so than others. And across Michigan and Metro Detroit, we're getting reports, and our Facebook page has been blowing up, as you know recently, Hugh, with a lot of people reporting these lights. Ron, for years, the Air Force conducted an investigation of so-called UFOs. They found no official proof anywhere from the feds tonight about those strange lights. Well, you wonder if the military's involved, as one of our uh, UFO experts uh, was curious there and mentioned. We did put some calls into Selfridge. The FAA, we didn't get any reaction. Could be a logical explanation for some of these light displays. I'll tell you this, there's no full moon right now, but we're getting an awful lot of reports of lights in the sky, Huel. Certainly not a weather balloon, Ron. All right, thank you. That's right. <laughs> talk tonight boy wrap your head around this ufo sightings are skyrocketing in 2012 and we're barely two weeks in eyewitnesses reporting strange things in 36 out of the 50 states and yeah florida's included 
We are joined on the phone right now, Peter Davenport from the, uh, he's the director of the UFO Center there in uh, Washington. Peter, uh, let me tell you something, everybody's got a, a cell phone camera these days. I'm imagining if you're having a lot of sightings, you're getting some pretty good pictures. Well, we get some pictures, but the overwhelming majority of them are of low quality, as you say, from those cell phones. What we encourage people to do if they see what they think may be a UFO is try to get a good camera, stabilize the camera no matter what they're using, and try to get a good still photo of it. Peter, why do you think you're getting so many this early in the year? Is it because it's 2012 and you got everybody going, oh, it's the Mayan calendar? Uh, I'm not one of those who believes that there's anything special about 2012, Bob, but uh -huh. I just, just before this program I reviewed our database. We took 110 reports on New Year's Eve, 13 of them are from Florida, and uh, something is going on. I mm -hmm. think it's picked up dramatically, the number of reports we're receiving, but what it means, I have no idea. What's the best picture you've ever seen, the best UFO you've ever seen, or at least seen a picture of? Well, uh, it's hard to say. I think the McMinnville, Oregon photo back in 1951, May of 51, uh, was probably one of the best, but there have been some good ones since that time. There were some good ones uh, captured during the Phoenix Lights event of March 13th. Yes, I've seen those. Those are, those are terrific. Do you, do you think this is going to continue throughout 2012? you think there's something, maybe something special going on right now? I have no idea, but I appear to be one of only very few UFO investigators who cannot see the future events clearly. <laughs> uh, I just don't know what's, what's going to happen, Bob. And I'm trained as a hard scientist, so I wait for the data to come in, and I make judgment on that. So you don't, you're not a paranormal uh, scientist. You're not, a, you're not a ghostbuster or anything like that. You just wait for the hard evidence. I wait for good, solid eyewitness accounts from credible American citizens or citizens from around the world. And I look at what I've collected and uh -huh. try to make a decision on that. Peter, I've always wished that I, I could see a UFO. Have you ever in your life seen one? have. In fact, I saw a doozy of a sighting here out in eastern Washington on the, I think it was the 17th of October last year, 2011. I was out for a walk on our local golf course and saw something go over at 6.42 p.m., for which I have absolutely no, exper no explanation. Uh, I've been a commercial pilot for the last 33 years, and I've never seen anything like that. No kidding. Well, it's very, it's fascinating to be sure, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get people to go to your website and take a look and see those photos for themselves. Peter, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you very much for your interest, Bob. Mm -hmm. Something strange was spotted in the sky above Pike County Tuesday. At this point, there's still no explanation as to what it was, and people are left wondering what's flying over their heads. LEX 18's Adam Weiner has more. These images, snapped by Alan Epling, has the man stumped. And that's saying something coming from a longtime amateur astronomer. I know a satellite when I see it. I track satellites with my ham radio and the telescope. But this object is like nothing he's ever seen. We were just sitting around talking, and uh, she said, there's a strange airplane in the sky. So Epling went to take a closer look. Like you had a giant mirror in the sky reflecting sunlight. And he saw something very different. And so I thought, well... There's a tiny helicopter or plane hovering up there. I'm going to look at it. I got my binoculars out, and when I looked through the binoculars, I was stunned. <laughs> this was no helicopter, and this was no plane. And, uh, in fact, this is what I saw. For two and a half hours, he watched and photographed this object as it hung in the air until eventually it disappeared, and he wasn't alone. Police say they received numerous calls, and Epling found other observers online. You, you asked me if I think it's an earthly origin. All that's left to ask, what is <laughs> I think it is. By definition, it remains an unidentified flying object. And it's still, it's still a UFO until it's identified. Covering the news in Pike County, Adam Weiner, LEX 18 News. Alan Epling and the local newspaper made calls to the Air Force and to local airports. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for the mysterious object. I wonder what it was. Several people in the Oildale area and some in Bakersfield reported seeing strange lights in the sky last night. Unsure of what to make of it, they asked Eyewitness News to check it out. I looked up and I seen a perfect triangle, three lights, and they were like orangish red not blinking. Well, this was like a 
dull yellow and you can just see it like a like if you were to put a triangle and you flip the triangle flat. It wasn't a bird and it wasn't a plane. I think it was UFO. The only thing I could think it was was aliens. Yes. They're moving. Catch this it. is real catch stuff. Catch it. Catch this is not fake. It's been described as a light or lights in the sky, varying in color, number, the speed it was moving, and what time it was visible. But no one can pinpoint what it was that they saw. To me, it looked like a paper bag. That I mean, thank you for being here tonight. We begin in the skies above Vancouver Island. In the past week, there have been multiple reports of strange flying objects darting across the horizon above Victoria. On Friday, a meteor streaked across B.C., working its way down into Washington State. But it's what else was in the sky that night that has many curious, including a prominent UFO researcher who says he's now on the case. CTV's Gord Kerbis has the story. A meteor tracking website shows the January 11th reports of people sighting a fiery object in the sky traveling from B.C. towards Washington State. But it seems that a meteor may not have been the only thing in the sky at that time. There are definitely some odd stuff took place on the 11th, and it took place on the island and in Victoria area, around, around there, and definitely in the lower mainland. Brian Vike is a UFO investigator based in Houston, British Columbia. That's right, the other Houston. His blog, The Vike Factor, is now filled with sightings from the 11th of strange lights and a triangular-shaped object the size of a school bus over Vancouver Island. A woman had taken her uh, children to school. She stopped. Uh, this is after a 6.30 meteor sighting. She had looked up a flash of the sky again, bang, here comes this solid object, triangular in shape, three orange balls at each of the points. She watched it move along, it came to a hover, and then bang, all the three balls of light went into the center, and bang, this thing was gone. I looked up in the sky and I saw just this light coming over. It doesn't look like it's from Earth. It looks like it's from somewhere else. We've spoken with Vancouver Islanders before about their strange sightings, and then Vike has looked into many of them as well. He's been investigating UFO sightings across Canada with a keen interest in his home province. What are you? He was recently sent this video of a strange flying object over the lower mainland shot with a night vision camera. And he's got objects doing all kinds of weird things in the sky at night and everything, and this is on a tripod steady and everything, so it's got some weird stuff. Since starting, Vike has looked into more than 11,000 reports and says 90% of them can be explained. Usually people seeing light reflected off the International Space Station and Chinese lanterns or search and rescue flares are often mistaken for more mysterious objects. But every once in a while reports jump out at them, like this 2010 sighting by a woman near Campbell River. This thing actually rose up from the, from the ground, hovered a little bit and then came towards her vehicle. By this time she's kind of, you know, getting a little excited and freaking out. And it went right over top of her vehicle and it was another triangle. Mike says 2013 is already starting off with an incredible number of reports. Anyone seeing strange objects is invited to contact him through British Columbia Gord Kerbis, CTV News, Courtney. Here, something's gonna happen. Nothing ever does. Dang, dude, this is weird. You can't see it no more, but they're there. Everyone agreed that after a while, the lights just disappeared. Oh, well, where did it all go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It was just vanished. Oh my God, they're beautiful. Oh my God. Oh my God. So the question remains: Was it aliens? Look at this. We go out to other planets to to investigate and you know find new life. Why can't they do the same thing? Now, the video of those lights was shot by people who saw it last night, local people in the area. And after reports of the sighting last night, Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Miles Musio made phone calls to NASA and Vandenberg Air Force Base, but we have yet to get a response. Stories like this one come from viewers like... It's a question for the ages. Are we alone in the universe? Believe it or not, we've actually been asked a lot to find out the answer. And a man who shared his experience with us three years ago is now sharing it with the nation. Will Whitson is live in Myrtle Beach to share our own experiences with the supernatural Will. Well, we get a lot of calls to investigate stories, guys, and sometimes those stories, well, they happen up there. It's almost a cultural phenomenon for odd happenings to be in South Carolina and North Carolina, and when people experience it, they call us to share. 
We're taking phone calls, we're answering emails, looking at Facebook. Any type of concern the community has, we like to answer them as well. Sometimes those concerns deal with something literally out of this world. All the tourists are in town, they got their cameras, they're seeing these lights out over the ocean, and it just sort of, you know, can grow to be something pretty big. I've seen some of the orange lights that people call in and, um, and claim that they have video up. No, not that kind. Something more like this. Local business owner and pilot Gary Travis shot video of it three years ago. Our interview with him went viral online, and now he's being featured on a National Science Channel program. I'm not going to be a guy that tells you I think they're alien spacecraft, and I don't have any kind of proof of that. You know, it would be fun to think something like that might happen. About five to ten feet above the two-story building or home was two bright lights that showed up. Check this out. The National UFO Reporting Center keeps a database of reports in every state. There are almost 1,200 reports in South Carolina, many from right here in the Grand Strand. All of a sudden, the emails we get, the phone calls, the Facebook messages, they all really increase. Even members of our own WMBF News family have had an encounter. And we all kind of got up, followed her out to the street, and saw this bright orange light. UFOs aren't the only weird happenings in the Grand Strand. Some phenomenon have been here for generations. The big one we hear about all the time is the uh, Seneca booms. My theory was maybe somebody's propane tank exploded. If you search hard enough, you may find a logical explanation. Probably the most common thing that we see around here um, is what's called chaff, which is basically a little, uh, little bits of metal particles that uh, military aircraft drop. But after an encounter, you may want to believe there's something bigger out there. The universe is remarkable, and it's infinite. Maybe we'll see a little sighting here over Myrtle Beach, over the Atlantic, and we'll be able to be live local late breaking on the scene then, too. When I asked Travis about his experience on the uh, Science Channel TV show, he said he was happy to share that experience. He says he thinks there are more people out there that have had these encounters with supernatural phenomenon, and he thinks they should speak up. Live in Myrtle Beach, Will Whitson, WMBF News. Here's a story. Some Amherst residents say they saw a real UFO over Hampshire County. That's right. As CBS 3 Springfield's April Baker tells us, some Amherst residents, they're open to the possibility of extraterrestrial life coming to Western Mass. Well, Chris, there certainly is a buzz today around Amherst about a possible UFO sighting. I went around town to speak with people about what they thought about this unexplained sight. <laughs> Laughter seemed to be everyone's initial reaction when I asked them about a possible UFO sighting in Amherst. But laughter aside, it was a hot topic in town today. Yeah, actually I heard about it when I got into work this morning. I didn't hear a lot about the story, but people were talking about it. On Tuesday between 5 and 7 p.m., several witnesses say they saw a diamond-shaped, dimly lit object in the sky. The object was reported to be moving slow and hovering about 75 to 100 feet above the ground. A plane has been one possible idea of what the mystery object could be, but today I was told otherwise. Westover saw nothing on the radar, so who knows what it could have been. But do people in Amherst really believe it could be a UFO? Some people say it's possible. It could have been a UFO, who knows? No one really knows if it was or wasn't. I guess you can see a UFO just about anywhere, usually in more less populated places than say Amherst, but you know, I guess you can see them anywhere. But whether you believe in UFOs or not, people say it's important to be open to the possibilities. I give them credit. If they want to talk about it, I think it's fine. I, I wouldn't want to deny somebody their experience. Now here's another fun fact. The National UFO Reporting Center says December 10th has been the most common day for reported UFO sightings over the past 50 years. Reporting in Amherst, April Baker, CBS 3 Springfield. Hey, who knows? Well, a mo mother and daughter in Natton are also keeping their eyes on the sky. They say something was flying over their house, and they have no idea what it was. A plane, a UFO, perhaps some paranormal activity. Our Nadia Stewart gets to the bottom of it. Usually the lights shining bright above Sam Martini's Nanton home are the sun, moon, and stars. But on Sunday, she saw something a little different. It rose so slowly, and then when it came at us, it came so quickly. It was around 11 o'clock at night. Sam and her daughter Bailey were at home watching TV. When outside, they noticed a pair of bright lights. They ran out to get a better look. Then the light just started coming straight at us and went straight and went straight over our house and headed to the northwest behind us. These blurry pictures, the only evidence of what they saw, 
Whatever it was, it frightened the cattle. It was unlike anything Sam had seen before. The way those white lights were hanging in the sky as long as they were and they didn't change color and they didn't change size for so long, that just makes me wonder. And sightings like these are more common than you may think. According to the Canadian UFO survey, there were 1,180 sightings last year, more than 100 in Alberta alone. And experts say there have been reported sightings of paranormal activity in Nanton before. Between the pictures and witnesses, experts say on the surface it's an unusual case and probably an explainable one too. They aren't quite convinced that this is paranormal activity. The shaking of the object or the movement of the object, um, that looks like um, a camera on a, with a time exposure on it that may have been bumped. It, it, it looked very sporadic. So a UFO? Probably not, say the experts. But he and others are fans of anything that gets Albertans gazing up into the night sky. Nadia Stewart, CBC News, Calgary. New at 11 from Cape Coral to California, people across the country are reporting mysterious lights in the night sky. All right, take a look. Some people say they look like fireballs. A Cape Coral family saw our newscast at noon about these lights in California on New Year's Eve and almost jumped off their couch. They say they saw the exact same thing at their house last night. NBC2's Alex DeArmas picks up our story. It was a normal Sunday night for this Cape Coral family. Until in the night sky, big red orange light. Right behind that was another one. And then right behind that was another one. Roxanne Hoffman says she saw something similar to this. This is video from California on New Year's Eve. Like a reddish orange, almost like a fireball, but you just didn't see any flames. She says the lights came from the north. Neither she nor her mother in law heard a thing. Just like they're following each other. Just like. It would be two people following each other, right? And it was weird. They say the lights then got behind a large cloud and disappeared. It was weird. It was really, really weird. NBC2 discovered the National UFO Reporting Center took 200 calls in two days, all reporting orange, reddish lights in the sky. Clearly, the reports that have come in here during the last 40 hours have virtually nothing to do with fireworks. The director of the center, Peter Davenport, says in the past 19 months, he's gotten over 5,000 similar calls. And they seem to defy any similarity to terrestrial aircraft. We just don't know what they are. Davenport says a small percentage of these cases can be Chinese lanterns or hot air balloons. But he isn't convinced they all are. At least we feel we're not seeing things, you know, and it's been seen somewhere else. While the mystery still remains, Hoffman says she's keeping an eye out. In Cape Coral, Alex DeArmis, NBC2. The Sri Lanka Air Force states that it is keeping a 24-hour vigil regarding the unidentified lights that were witnessed in the skies over several parts of the island in the recent past. SLAF media spokesperson Wing Commander Shiraz Jalaldeen said that no unidentified airborne craft had been picked up on radar as yet. Meanwhile, unidentified lights were witnessed in the skies over several parts of the island yesterday as well. This is the unidentified light that was witnessed in the skies above Hambigamwa in Tanamalvilla at around 8.30 p.m. last night. <laughs> Meanwhile, this unidentified light was captured on a mobile phone camera in the eastern skies above Ambalantota. An unidentified light was also recorded on a mobile phone camera in the skies above Ihalayagoda in Gampaha. News first reported on several similar incidents in the recent past. What are these unidentified lights? If they are not UFOs, then who is responsible for informing the public as to what they are? News first will remain vigilant. Wobei das merkwürdigste daran lässt sich jedoch erkennen, wenn wir das von der Tunnelkamera aufgenommen Filmmaterial verlangsamen. 
Bemerken Sie das mysteriöse Licht, welches das Fahrzeug scheinbar verfolgt? Könnte es sich hierbei um das gleiche Licht handeln, durch den der Fracht LKW letzte Woche abgehoben wurde? Die Art und Weise, wie sich die beiden zwischen... There was something dazzling in the sky last night, and we're not talking about New Year's Eve fireworks. Well, people from all over Northern California contacted us to report a bizarre flying object or objects. Most of the sightings happened just after midnight. News 10's George Warren spent the day trying to identify the unidentified flying objects. Well, we saw it right through the trees. It was bright enough to shine directly through the trees without any problem seeing it. Stephen Brown watched it over Sacramento. Hans Mount spotted it over Auburn. Kind of approached from over that direction and <clears throat> came across kind of slow. Did they see the same thing that Kay Pinlack saw in Stockton? Pretty much right above this palm tree here. Multiple objects, he says, captured on his iPhone. Guys, I've seen like six bright orange color lights and they're like in, almost in a diamond or triangle shape they're, it was weird and then, so they started just separating you see that other one up there on the right though and not just northern california somebody posted this video from the hollywood hills on youtube multiple glowing objects out there among the new year's eve fireworks and now it's three there's two, there's two of them no 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 there's three all together right four. no it's four it's now four. In Auburn, Hans and his wife Terry saw it a few hours earlier than the other sightings. But there was no sound. That's the funny thing. Or, or the lights, you know, yeah. the usual lights. No sound, no blinking that, so. lights, just <laughs> this big illuminated form. And whatever it was moved up and to the left. Uh, it hovered there for probably about 60 seconds. And then it took off at a high rate of speed out of sight directly away from us and just disappeared. Of course, we're always looking for rational explanations for UFO sightings. This 2008 sighting over the Sacramento Valley turned out to be an airplane with an electronic sign under the wings. A year later, a mysterious flashing light near Placerville turned out to be arcing power lines. There's a light. We're still waiting to find out if there's a rational explanation for what people saw last night all across California. Now, an FAA spokesman tells me that there was no unusual aircraft activity reported to the FAA last night. If this was some sort of hoax, it would have to be a pretty elaborate one because it was seen by so many people all over California. Well, yeah, up and down the state, which is interesting, and, and within hours of each other. Yeah, so the earliest sighting we heard about was about 8 p.m. up in Auburn, uh, Terry and Hans. Uh, they said it was just a single object they saw, very uh, moving unnaturally, too fast for a balloon, too slow for an airplane. Uh, in Sacramento as well, Stephen said that it was a single object hovering and then streaking away. And then, of course, down in Stockton, the, the multiple objects, as in uh, Hollywood. That's the interesting part, that it was hovering and then it started cruising. Yeah. That suggests, yeah, it's not a balloon. Or There's some intelligent and control okay. of um, this thing. Nothing showed up on radar that the FAA is willing Not to that they're telling us. Uh, we also sure talked. Would, yeah. We checked with Travis Air Force Base in Beale, and they said, of course, nothing unusual happening. All right. Uh, well, you know, it'll be interesting if someone can step forward and offer please, an explanation. I'm done. Oh. Look at this. 